Believe it or not, the finger technique that you have to use to play fast singles is actually the same finger technique that you have to use to play doubles well. In other words, if you can master light quick singles one hand at a time, you can much more easily master doubles. This is super simple, practical, and achievable for you. So let's dig in. Hey, before we get rolling today, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't yet checked out this totally free e-guide, I want you to do it. It's called the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. Unlock your hands for maximum speed, volume, and control in four simple, easy to follow steps. This downloadable PDF guide that you can take to your practice room gives you just a great overview of the steps that you need to make sure you're following to be reaching your full potential with your hand technique on the kit, which means better fluidity, better speed, all the good stuff we wanna work on. So if you is totally free check it out in the description most of the time the reason you get hung up on doubles is because you actually haven't fully mastered singles now how do you know if you fully mastered singles well there's a good test that you can do and it's this I want you to get your pad out get your stick you and play along with me here I want you to play quiet eighth notes with either hand maybe start with whichever hand you're feeling better about your stronger hand play light, quick eighth notes, and at 160, really, you have to use your fingers. By the time we're getting to that tempo, we can't just play it with our wrist. So what I want you to do is see if you can play finger singles, eighth notes, at 160 beats per minute. So they should look about like that. I could play these with my wrist. Super stiff, doesn't sound very good. Or I can use a little bit of wrist, a little bit of fingers, but I can also just pretty much just isolate it to the fingers. Wrist moving a little bit, we can still use some wrist, but mostly fingers are driving it at that point when we're playing quietly. Now, if we were playing these more loudly, we would have to use a lot more wrist. But what we wanna do here is use these same finger skills that we have to use to play these light, quick singles. We wanna use those for doubles. So if you're able to, to follow along with me and do what I just did, great. You're in really good shape because you're already using your fingers. But if you're like, Steven, I have no idea what's going on here. I've never tried doing this. I've never tried using my fingers for singles like this. I've seen people do it, but I just can't really figure out how to do it. That's okay, because what I want you to do first, before you even attempt that again, is try this exercise we're gonna do right here to just to work out our fingers. Pinch the end of your stick. You can either do the butt end or the tip. Let's start with the butt end. Pinch the butt end of your stick with your index finger and your thumb and hold it out like this. You're extending your arm. I'm just gonna point roughly toward the camera here so you can see that the arm's extended. And what I'm gonna do is bring the stick up and down just with my fingers. Not with my wrist, only with my fingers. And so when, when the stick is down, the fingers are out like this, kind of like I'm reaching out to shake somebody's hand. And then when I bring the fingers in, the stick is coming up. All the while we're keeping it pinched tightly up here so that it doesn't fall. And at first it feels kind of weird. It's kind of a strange, not exactly natural motion to do. But once you can start getting it faster, you feel how, oh, this is actually becoming an exercise. This is becoming a workout. And so what we eventually want to do is do this on the, the tip of the stick. So the stick's a little bit heavier because the butt end's heavier. Gives us more of a workout. So pinch tightly, your palm is facing down. You're not moving your wrist, it's just your fingers. So it's pretty much just these three fingers here. Just middle ring and pinky pulling the stick in. When you can do this, have the stick drop down to almost straight down and back up. So you've almost got as close to a 90 degree range of motion as possible. It's gonna become less as you go faster, but if you can get it as close to that as possible, that's gonna give you a great finger workout, which is actually a forearm workout because these are the muscles that are driving your fingers. Now what's powerful about this is that if you can learn to do that, you can learn to just open and close your hand. That's all we're doing, opening and closing the fingers. Literally like sitting here and going like this. This right here alone will give you a good, a good forearm, wrist, finger workout. That's literally all that we're doing. And so if you can teach your hand to do that, then what you can do is then slide the stick through to where now suddenly you're gripping it normally and the same motion still applies. We can still sit here, Grip nice and firm here, index kind of curled around next to the thumb, and then fingers just opening and closing, and suddenly we've got our finger singles. So check out the transition. If we can do this, get comfortable with this, slide the finger to here, 
do the exact same thing on the pad, and then it's even easier because we have rebound helping us out. Now, I know I just sped through that, and everything that I just covered, that might be something that you spend the next month working on, maybe the next week, or maybe the next month, or a couple of months, and that's okay because these things take time. It takes time to train your fingers. A big truth about coordination on the drums is that coordination isn't just a four-way thing. You know, we talk about four-way coordination, but we're actually having to build coordination between parts of our limbs, you know, training our feet to do different things, but specifically with our hands because there's so many things we can do. We have to get our brains to communicate with our fingers and with our, our grip point here. And so we're, there's all sorts of coordination going on just within our hand as we're learning these things. And so it takes time to train your fingers to do this. So be patient with it, but practice this a bunch. Make it a part of your regular routine and you will begin to transition to using those finger singles. And once you're able to do that, that's great because then we can then transition from this back into doubles and you're gonna find your doubles start to sound a lot better. The reason that's the case is because fast, loud doubles like like that actually utilize the same finger motion that we did in those quick singles. So if you're doing this, when you're playing quick singles, it's literally just your fingers going like that. And that's the exact same thing that we use to catch the rebound and to increase the power of our doubles. The only difference is that we're using our wrist for that first note but then we're bringing in the fingers to strengthen that second note. And so actually, it's very interesting that if you can play fast singles well, that means you've already trained your fingers to do exactly what they're supposed to do when playing doubles. And so then, once you've mastered that finger motion, you don't have to focus so hard on it when you're trying to play doubles, because what's so difficult a lot of times is when, especially beginners are trying to learn doubles and figure out the finger thing, but you're trying to think about all these other things at once because of rebound, you know, playing your doubles well, you've got to think about a lot of technique and mechanics, and so trying to incorporate the fingers into that just gets messy sometimes. But if you master the fingers in a more simple setting, even simpler starting with this, then it's a lot easier, much less frustrating when you actually get into doubles. So say you've worked through those first few steps and you've got the finger singles happening whether that's a week from now or a month from now, or thinking forward, or thinking long-term, or thinking goals, imagine yourself mastering these things. So say you've got that under control, what are we doing next? So we wanna get our 16th note doubles up to about 120. Where we're very specifically, clearly using those fingers. But we don't have to get to 120 right away. We can really start off closer to 100. Where at that tempo, we could almost just almost just wrist it out, but we're still having to use some fingers. And so notice how in playing that, I'm playing that first note with my wrist and the fingers are coming in, snapping it down for that second note. So we're using some rebound. Naturally there's rebound, because it could just be this. Just throwing it down, putting a little pressure on the stick. Rebound does that. But I can strengthen that rebound, increase that, the, the velocity of the stick there for that second note by snapping the fingers in. and then we have our doubles. So that's the, the bridge that you wanna cross here. That's the transition you wanna make, where once you've got this happening, and you can do the finger singles, and those are sounding better and better, and you're able to go faster. Remember, it doesn't have to be big stick kite. We're talking small, you know, low volume. Just being able to do this comfortably, and keep going, and not trip, not freeze up, not get messy, keep it nice and clean, keep it going. And then at that point, you're ready to transition into doubles, which you can practice quietly at first. Practice these doubles softly. Start off a little slower, but practice utilizing the fingers and gradually getting louder. Always making sure that you're playing right, left, right, left. Your wrists are just playing right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Fingers are playing or reinforcing the rebound that's already happening. And of course, as you're practicing that, always be doing, going back and doing that finger strengthening exercise regularly. What I wanna leave you with and what I wanna make sure that you understand here is that our focus is not, at least right now, not yet, our focus is not to play the doubles smoothly or to master the doubles. The focus is to train the fingers. And that's why, don't get discouraged if doubles are still a mess and if you're not able to do this, start with step one. And so take satisfaction in doing this every day. It's gradually gonna get better. Focus on training the fingers, that way naturally the doubles start to come together 
and become much more effortless. Now, there's so much more we can cover with hand technique. I mean, hand technique is a huge topic. So much detail, so much nuance that we can get into. And obviously, we just, we just touched the surface of a very specific little topic today in this lesson. So, what I want you to do is download that guide I told you about a minute ago, the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. So what it is, it's four steps to unlock your hands for maximum speed, control, and volume, and looseness, all the good stuff we want to work on. And what it does is it gives you a great overviews of what you can work on in each of these categories, step by step, so you know you're gripping loosely, you're building finger strength, you're building speed, all the things that you've got to do in order to become more fluid around the kit. And so it's sort of the big picture look. Today in this lesson, we zeroed in on something very specific, which is still very important, but in the guide, kind of take a step back and we look at the four big steps that'll really get you much closer to reaching your hand speed and volume dynamic goals on the drum. So go check out that guide, the free PDF guide. It's gonna help you out a bunch. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And of course, stay non-glamorous. I'll see you on the next video.